Hello, everybody. This is AK. I'm back. I already made a video uh, earlier this morning, um, and that is scheduled to go live at 8 p.m. later. But uh, my wrist started hurting. Um, I I think I've been gaming a bit too much, <laughs> so I decided to give them a, my wrist a bit of a rest, and uh, so I have some time and so might as well make a bonus video right so in the news we see that uh, ec will read loses major lease contract with china tobacco right and of course i've made videos and uh, i've blocked about ec will read before and um i i think um this thing about ec will read losing a major lease contract uh okay this video is not going to be about bashing ec will read right so like i say i never bash any entity i like to look at the bigger issues on hand i think this uh is a wider statement it is possibly a wider statement about the state of the chinese economy right and then it is also of course about it's, a, it's also a statement about how not all logistics asset reads are good investment because this is something that we've been uh, reading or hearing about in the media or that if you have, want to invest in reads so we want to invest in reads that hold logistics assets because they are resilient so it's not always the case all right uh, we always have to look into the details all right so uh, it could be a wider statement about the Chinese economy, the state of the Chinese economy, how they are having some big problems and about how uh, not all logistics assets reads are good investments. And uh, if you want to, if you haven't watched my video on how to avoid investing in reads like EC World Reads yet, I'll leave a link to that video in the description box below. Right. Um, the next thing I want to talk about is Singapore savings bonds. I blocked about it earlier this morning and I, I said that back in October I had this to say although I'm sticking to my strategy of growing the investment grade bond components of my investment portfolio there might no longer be a hurry to lock in higher yields for the longer term now uh, okay I said that because we could see yields staying higher for longer and uh, what I've been doing was I have been uh, nibbling at Singapore savings bonds in the past two months when the 10 year average yields were relatively high. And this time round, the Singapore savings bond is offering a 3.4% per annum in 10 year average yield, which is a bit higher than the 3.32% per annum we saw in, for the last Singapore savings bond. So it seems that I will be nibbling again and uh, people wonder how much is, how big is a nibble? Well, for me, a nibble is like $5,000. <laughs> that qualifies as a nibble for me and for many people, I'm sure. So, uh, like I say in the blog, uh, Q4 and Q1 are leaner quarters for me, right? Leaner quarters in terms of passive income I receive from my investments. So, I, I'm, I have to be very careful with my money. Right, I cannot take big uh, gobbles or big bikes because uh, I need my money to last until uh, next year Q2 uh, because Q2 and Q3 I'll have uh, bigger chunks of passive income coming in. Right, uh, and because of this, for my T bill ladder, uh, of course, auctions for six months T bills happen every. Um, two weeks and I've been strengthening my TBU ladder uh, by adding fresh funds to funds which have come back from maturing TBUs um, but because I want to be buying some SSBs now nibbling at SSBs I will continue to maintain it, uh, to maintain the ladder but I will not be strengthening the ladder right so I'll be just uh, recycling funds which are coming back from maturing T-bills into new T-bills. And uh, I jokingly said, lah, you know, in the blog that someone suggested that I rejoin the workforce so that I wouldn't have to do such juggling act when it comes to money. <laughs> and I say, oh my, there's a PTSD moment, right? And I, I ended by saying that if AK can juggle money around, so can you. Uh, and, uh, but all, all this, right, I'm, uh, point me to something else that I want to say and that is that 
it's not just business entities, but on a personal level, we want to keep our cash flow strong, right? Strong cash flow is important. It's not just for businesses, but also for individuals like us, right? And having a bond component in my portfolio uh, is very comforting, right? And it's also a good idea. It's very attractive because of the higher interest rate environment, higher yields environment. And uh, this will strengthen our cash flow in a risk-free manner, right? And, you know, some diversification, uh, should help to ensure our cash flow, the diversification of income generating assets. Of course, that's what I'm talking about. So a diversification, some diversification of income generating assets in our portfolio should help to ensure our cash flow uh, is more reliable during bad times. And of course, I've used the example of how we shouldn't be 100% in growth stocks like Alibaba that uh, do not pay a dividend, right? I've said this before, but to be fair, you know, if we are 100% in uh, income generating asset like EC World REIT, we would also be in a very sorry state today. So I've, I've said this before, cash flow is king and diversification of our income generating assets will ensure that our cash flow is more reliable during bad times, right? So if AK can talk to himself, so can you. Bye-bye.